you guys who follow us on social media, I know most of you guys who listen to the podcast aren't on social media, but for those of you who are, you've probably seen this Sarah Adams, who has been on the show and has really, I mean, I think it's safe to say Tonto follows Benghazi and, and like really what's going on with the terrorists involved in Benghazi more than anyone. Right. I mean, is there anyone who follows it more than her? No, I, well, she, that's what she did, but that's what her job was at the agency. That's what a targeter does. They hunt people down, <laughs> hunt people down. They may not execute the action to go get them, but she's the one that finds them. And what I see is I, she's just still doing her job. And that's why she was probably the best targeter. Sorry, all you agency people. She was probably the best targeter there. And you let her go because she decided to side with us and, and which correctly she should have, which and Sarah's a smart person with common sense. So, but I feel bad for you, terrorist. Sarah's like a pit bull. She going to buy, she going to bite and hold on. And she's going to find all you motherfuckers. Obviously yeah. you ain't going no. And she's doing it again. Now it's just hard to find people to action on these guys or action. These guys, which means go well, get them or go kill them. She's, she's, she's been on top of all that. So, yeah. Before any news source even reported on this, I saw it from her. And that's why I put it up from her and it got a lot of traction. Um, so I'll just read it for those of you, once again, who aren't on social media, who don't see this stuff. Um, she said to us in the last 24 hours, this was on July 12th. So this was probably July 11th that happened. Um, authorities at the Istanbul airport in Turkey detained, then deported Ziad Balam, one of the most notorious terrorists from the 2012 Benghazi attacks on the U.S. mission and CIA annex in Benghazi. The U.S. government must ensure that Ziad stays detained now in Libya as he must face trial for his crimes. And then I saw, you know, Jeremy Mitchell and other people associated yeah. with you are asking people to call their congressman. I think just like you, I'm always skeptical of, you know, if there's no, yeah. no political motive. Are they really actually going to do anything? But uh, I think people want to hear your comment on this because I, even though in the mainstream media, Benghazi has been forgotten, there's plenty of people who have not forgotten it. And there's still people being captured who were responsible for what happened that night. And, and uh, as far as the media goes, I don't, they're, no, they're, the media's terrible. They're, they're not going to do anything. They're not going to report on it um, because uh, most of the media, again, is, is, extremely extremely left which is terrible um but even right-wing media i would say and they report on it because it's just uh, not the flavor of, well, of and like that's month uh, or year or whatever and you're no you're right and fox news ain't going to report on it because you're it, it is it has nothing to do with trump and how awesome trump is and newsweek is not going to report on it because that's it has nothing to do with unless trump was going to actually go get and like pick him up they'll report on it then but if it has nothing to do with trump well they're not going to report on it as well so I, but that's I, I I think that's where agency uh, where Sarah's with the agency it doesn't make two two shits it doesn't make two shits to me if they report on or not she's doing what she needs to do to at least try to get him here I don't think it's going to happen I know Sarah's going to bust her ass to try to make it happen and and I hope she makes me eat grow and she she does make it happen but buddy I couldn't have said it better than you just said it it's not the flavor of the month it's not going to help anybody get elected it's not going to help a right wing politician get put into office it's not going to keep a left-wing politician from not going into office uh so sarah just sarah's got her work cut out for her but i have you know i've grant on my feeds and i reposted on my stories as much as i could um you know i don't think it's a lost fight it's just going to be extremely uphill extreme uphill battle for her but if anybody can win that uphill battle it's sarah that's what she did <laughs> i just said she's a pit bull she's not going to let it go until it's kind of reminds me of Andy Dufresne at Shawshank Redemption that kept writing the, the 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 state library board to give him books. Well, I'm just going to write eight million letters a day till they answer me. Well, that's what she's going to do. She's going to keep saying, "Hey, hey, congressman, hey, politicians, hey, everybody, this asshole needs to come here." And she's going to do it until it gets done, or they tell her, "Stop, don't do it anymore. You're going to find some repercussions." But, but knowing Sarah, even if they told her that, she'd probably give him the finger and say, "Well, shit, I'm going to even do it more." Oh, but I so saw I, I do I have any faith that they're gonna get no, I don't. It's not a disappointment to me because so then what happens to him if he's detained? He either stays in Libya and he becomes a prisoner of them, or is he in Turkey right now? Or Libya? I haven't checked. Recently. I think I think they, I think from what they, they get, said Libya because I think yeah, he's detained yeah. in Turkey. Yeah. Well, I mean he's detained now in Libya. Yeah. In Libya. They they're gonna make him their own prisoner, which he'll be in their prisons forever, which if you've ever been in, near a third world prison, they're not they're they're a lot worse than what we got here. That's true. Um, which is not a bad thing. 
Uh, they can execute him as well, uh, depending on what they want to do, or they could charge him with something and release him, and we can do absolutely nothing about it. If he's a Libyan citizen and their host government has him, we're screwed. They don't. They have to say, "Hey, U.S., you can have him." If they don't say that, "U.S., you can have him," we can't go get him. I mean, we can do it clandestine. Not saying we do that. Maybe we do. It might have happened a couple of times here or there, but if that government, if their government wants him, they got him, and they can do whatever the hell they want with him. Um, what would probably happen, and and I would assume, and this is this this depends on the president and who's who's the commander in chief. At if they ever did release him. And this has maybe happened once or twice before, and he went back and just be a civilian. He might have an unfortunate accident and die. Maybe that hmm. that just shit shit happens. You know that that's that's honestly, if the U.S. is going to do anything about it, I can see that happening. Um, and then you know, then there there, but there'll be no responsibility because he just had an unfortunate accident. Uh, but if he's in a Libyan custody and he's in their prison. You know, he's going to be in their prison for as long as they want. They got him. It's his. They're they're his. There's nobody, not the UN, not the US, can override him because he's a Libyan citizen. If he was a US citizen from Libyan descent, that's a different story. But yeah, yeah, he's there. And but if he is in there, brother, I can tell you, it ain't no cakewalk. He, he's probably. He, I'm sure they're not treating him very well, and he's probably worse off there than he would be in a prison here. But I, I do agree with Sarah. He was a terrorist attacker. He needs to be held responsible for killing U.S. U.S. citizens, uh, especially U.S. citizens of that that uh, of that command of that high of a command with Ambassador Stevens with the State Department, and it's right to bring him here. But I don't know if his treatment honestly would be worse here. I think honestly, in the U.S. prisons here, he'd probably be treated better than he would in a Libyan prison. So, um, whatever happens, though, you know, I, I, I appreciate Sarah still staying on top of it because if she hasn't. Obviously, this administration and even the past administration, like Trump or not, he didn't stay on top of it either. So at least somebody's still trying to hold people accountable for the attack. And as you, you've seen from her books and her posts and coming on our show, there is a hell of a lot of people that are responsible. Some have died, but there's still many more out there that we should be going after. And she's finding them on. I mean, <laughs> she's just finding them on social media. Yeah. I mean, that's that's how that's how pathetic that's how pathetic our, our government agencies are right now is that Sarah's finding them as a civilian just on social media, just by doing legwork. And they're not finding one damn terrorist out there, at least one's responsible. And that may just be because they don't care because it was, hey, we didn't put the agency in a good light. So we're not going to go after those terrorists, which is a shitty way of of doing your job, agency and government. But that's probably why they don't go after them. But Sarah. Sarah will, and Sarah will continue to find them all. She will find every, guarantee before she is dead, she will find every terrorist that attacked us because she is that good. So, uh, yeah, I was going to say really quick uh, before I even ask my question, if you could remove the mic a little closer to you because I could tell you're very- Is it very close? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You're supposed to be close to the mic. But anyway, what I was going to ask you is, this might be a really stupid question because there were so ah. many people involved in Benghazi. But when you see the picture of this guy, is there any- do, by any chance, do you recognize the guy? I mean, there's so many people. In no, I, yeah, and I, you, everything that I saw, it was under night vision for the most part. Um, when we were at the consulate and it was all lit up, um, it's still very hard to, to unless you're, unless you know, you're going to a room and you're five foot away from them and it's in the, the room is lit up. It's hard to tell facial features from those distances and oh, from yeah, moving so fast. So it is. Uh, um, but no, I need, but even just knowing and some of those guys I recognize because they were 17th Feb and 17th Feb Mars Brigade guys. And I, you know, I'd been around him before. So, oh yeah, shit. I didn't know he was a terrorist. Well, there you go. That guy though, I didn't, I, I didn't recognize him from personally recognize him. All I recognized was from the, some of the mug shots of when I did, when I was more involved politically with Benghazi and bringing people held accountable to the table, um, there are certain pictures that I would see or somebody would give me, hey, do you know this guy? Do you see this guy? And I didn't remember that face from some of those. It was, it was like doing a photo shoot. I mean, doing a uh, a lineup, you know, when you get oh, for yeah. a criminal lineup, it was it was like that. But I don't remember him on that battlefield, but I, but I didn't really see faces. And I think that has a lot to do with training too. You just don't, you're always taught to shoot targets that are inanimate. And I think that gets ingrained in your head a little bit. So people don't, when you're shooting some, at least in my opinion, 
um, unless it's close distance and you can actually see their facial features because you're so close and the room's lit up. Maybe you're not wearing night vision at distances like that. They're to me, they just look like silhouettes. Just like, you know, just like you, just like a range, you just yeah. like a range silhouette. So yeah, no, it's not a stupid question at all, but it's not. No, I'm just, I'm, yeah. I'm curious. Cause no. when, you know, cause Sarah also posted more than just like one photo of the guys, quite a few. 